Hello, and welcome back to SIBO Mistakes. This is the series where I talk about the biggest mistakes that SIBO sufferers are making, and they are keeping you stuck. Stuck and symptomatic. So these are the mistakes that are going to cause the symptoms like bloating and abdominal distension, abdominal pain and cramping, diarrhea or constipation, or perhaps both. And these are the things that are going to cause SIBO relapse after relapse after relapse. If you want to be SIBO free, nay, SIBO proof anytime in the near future, this is a very important series for you to pay attention to. Now, in today's video, we're going to hearken back to something that I talked about recently in the series, and that is that the conceptual framework that you use to understand this condition might be deeply flawed, if not entirely incorrect. There's one study that really demonstrated this beautifully, but aspirate studies are starting to point in this direction as well. You see, what we now understand about SIBO is that SIBO is not simply a quantity issue, meaning it's not just that you have too many bacteria and we need to get that total number, the total quantity to go back down, but we need to look at the quality of the bacteria that you have. Is it just that the room is overcrowded or is it the quality of who is in that room? And again, more and more research is suggesting that it is the latter. There's a 2019 study where they looked at this and it was really fascinating, but what they were able to show is that A, there was a correlation between the degree of dysbiosis in the small intestine, that is imbalance between the good and the bad, and the symptoms that the patients were presenting with. But when they tried to look for a correlation between the amount of bacteria, the amount of microbes in the small bowel, the quantity, and the symptoms, there was no such correlation. The symptoms that you deal with are probably not tied to the quantity, the number of bacteria in your bowel. And that is the framework that many of you have held on to for a long time. Rather, it is a state of dysbiosis that we need to be thinking about. And we need to think of things that would treat or remedy dysbiosis first and foremost. Now, here's the thing. This is the ultimate scenario of shooting yourself in the foot and then complaining that your foot hurts. You see a lot, if not all of the treatments that you have undergone for SIBO are making this worse. And I think that is a major, major reason why you are still stuck and watching this video here on YouTube. Say somebody came to me with a straight diagnosis of dysbiosis, not SIBO, not anything else. They know that they have dysbiosis. What would we assume was the root cause of that dysbiosis? Ready? Three, two, one. Antibiotics. We all know this now. We take an antibiotic for a cold or a sinus infection or an infection because we want to kill the bad microbes. And we do, but in doing so, there is collateral damage and we kill some of the good microbes in the process. And the same thing happens when we take antimicrobials and antibiotics in hopes of killing the SIBO. Yeah, you're killing some of the bad guys, and that may or may not have value for you, but you're also doing collateral damage and you're killing some of the good guys. I know that everybody believes that rifaximin is totally free of consequence because it doesn't make it to the colon and therefore it doesn't attack the good microbes. But I've got news for you. You have good microbes in the small intestine too. And they are just about as important, if not more important, than the microbes in your colon. So we are creating a dysbiotic environment in the small intestine every time we try to treat with an antimicrobial or an antibiotic. Similarly, all of these SIBO diets that you hear about, whether it be low FODMAP or SCD or the Allison Seebecker diet or the biphasic diet or the low fermentation diet, all of them are restrictive. And all of them specifically restrict some type of plant food. And we know there is good, good research now. We know that low fiber diets and low diversity diets cause dysbiosis or make it much worse. So here we have a condition that many people believe to be a quantity number problem, but really it's a quality problem. It's a dysbiosis problem. And that is correlated to the symptoms that you care about. But here we are treating it like it's a number problem, and we're making the quality problem much worse. We're taking antibiotics and antimicrobials, hoping to kill the bad guys, but we're also killing the good guys. We're doing a restrictive diet for symptom alleviation, and that has some value, but we are overusing and abusing the crap out of those diets, with some people being on them for numerous years, 
and we are making the individual malnourished and we are making the microbiome small and weak and non-diverse. If there is one thing that you take away from this video, it's that a diverse microbiome is a happy, stable, resilient microbiome. And that is what you want. And that is what appears to correlate with symptomatic relief in a so-called SIBO state. And look, I know, I get it. I'm just a stranger here on the internet. You don't know me from a hole in the wall. And here I am saying things that are completely different from what you've heard before. But here's the thing. What you've heard before and what you've done before did not work. If they did, you wouldn't be watching my video right now. You're not just here because you're a huge nerd and you like learning this stuff. You're here because you still don't feel good and you want to feel better. So I ask you, yes, this is different. And yes, it might be a hard pill to swallow, but at the end of the day, don't you need something different? If the same old status quo was gonna get you better, you would have already been better. So if you're looking for more of more different messaging, I guess, something that goes a little bit against the SIBO grain and gets results and gets people better, helps people have flat tummies and great poops and eat FODMAPs without a care in the world, then I hope you stay over here in my little corner of the internet. FODMAP freedom is a heck of a journey and I lead you through all of these SIBO mistakes and more. And I teach you how to heal your body and build a SIBO proof body with the most natural, holistic, low cost methods possible. And me and my team are gonna be there to hold your hand every step of the way. So if you feel like you've reached the end of what you're able to do on your own here out in the wild, wild west of the internet, I really hope that you'll consider joining FODMAP freedom really soon.